Hello to all my fellow artists and as always, welcome to Art in Motion. Now because Blender internal is going to be falling away in Blender 2.8, I've decided to update an old tutorial on how to create toon shading or cell shading inside of Blender, but instead we'll be using Eevee and Cycles. I'm going to show you a few different methods, so if you have a manga, anime, cartoon, comic book style project that you need to come up with shaders for, hopefully this will get you some of the way there. I'm going to show you a few different styles and techniques in order to get these looks. If you donate to my Patreon, you'll gain access to this project as well as some of the past projects that I've worked on. Alright, so let's dive right in. As you can see with this scene, we've just got a camera, a plane and three Suzannes. So what we're going to do is just go over to the shading tab at the top here. Normally we would be in look dev mode, so we're just going to change over to rendered mode over here just so we can see what it looks like in Eevee. And as you can see it's pretty dark and that's because we don't have any lights. But for this technique we don't need lights because we're going to go shaderless. We're going to delete the principled BSDF and then we're going to press shift A, go to input and add a Fresnel. We're going to plug the Fresnel straight into the surface. The next thing we want to do is press shift A go down to converter, add in color ramp and we'll just stick it in between the two. We can then move these sliders to get a far stronger contrast but we'll just change it over here to constant and we'll move this white tab over. So now we sort of get a bit of an outline or a really really dark shadow. I just want to select all of these, go to object change it to smooth and there we sort of have it. That's the simplest version of the shader. What we can still do is go in here and add a few more tabs. We'll make this one a light gray, maybe move it over. We can add maybe another one somewhere over here. We'll make this one maybe a shade of really dark blue and move it somewhere else. Okay that one actually will make it a light blue. So there we have this very 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 stylized uh, shader. We can make this a little bit more interesting by pressing shift A, going to input adding a texture coordinate node and taking the normal output and plugging it into the normal of the Fresnel. So that gives us a little bit of a different look you can choose which one you think looks better. You can go with out or with. Or you can grab the reflection output and plug it into the normal. And that one gives us something that looks a little bit more like a stylized comic book chrome. Just keep in mind that this shader doesn't react to light. So if I were to add a light to the scene, it doesn't do anything. And the nice thing about this shader is it also works inside of cycles. So if I were to now change over to cycles, you can see it inside of cycles. It does have a problem with emitting light, but that's not really that big of a problem. And generally you wouldn't want to use cycles for this just because cycles will always take longer to render. So I would just suggest sticking to Eevee. You still have your shadows being cast, but otherwise this shader is very stylistic and very very fast. Another very quick and easy technique for getting Toon style renders is to use solid colors. So to do that we'll just delete everything here, press shift A, go to input, RGB and plug it into the surface. We can change this to whatever color we like. And if we go into our scene settings over here, turn on freestyle, we can then go down to the view layer settings and just turn on a whole bunch of things. And when we press render, we now get the line work with a solid color underneath. The one added benefit to this technique is we can use it with transparency. So all that you've got to do is go over to your scene settings, under film, change alpha sky to transparency. And when we render we now get a transparent background. But we can actually make the solid color 
transparent as well, so it makes it a lot easier for compositing. You can also make it solid white, and that'll help with compositing. Instead, we'll just delete this RGB node, and press Shift A, go down to Shader, and select Transparent, and plug it in. Now the big problem is, is it's going to come out solid. So what we have to do is, under the material settings, underneath the blend mode, we change it to alpha clip. And now, when we press render, it will show the line work on a transparent background, which you can then composite on top of everything. So this is something that you would have to render out separately and composite on top. I am hoping that they develop layer overrides for Blender Eevee, but for now, you'll just have to render it out and composite it on separately. Now this technique you've probably already seen before, because from my understanding, it was specifically made for non-photoreal renders, like tune shading. Now what you want to do is press Shift A, go over to Converter, Shader to RGB, and plug it in just after the shader and into the surface, or you can plug it into another shader. Because what this node does is it converts the shader information into color information, into RGB. And you can use this information in many different ways. So what we can do, like we did with the previous examples, is add in a color ramp. Change it to constant, and we can just adjust the lighting however we wish. We can add in more points as we become accustomed to. And the big bonus with this is it adjusts to lighting. Now, if we were to just plug this back into here, delete this, and change this lamp's color to blue, and we'll just duplicate it quick and change this one to red. We can see it translates across, but when we add in the color ramp, it will change the color to black and white again. Now, we can actually fix this. We press Shift A, go to Converter, go over to Separate RGB, we'll plug it in over here. We'll then add another Converter, Combine RGB and add it afterwards. So here we see red plugs into red, so we just duplicate this, plug the green into this one and plug it in over here. We'll then duplicate it one more time, plug in the blue, and plug it in over here. So now we've got our RGB, and it comes out fairly stylized. We can adjust each one of these ramps to give us a different look. Beyond this, we can even plug in textures. So let's just add in a texture. We'll add in a wave texture. We'll go to Shift A, add in a Mix RGB. We'll plug it in over here. We'll then plug it into the bottom so we get that. We'll change it to Multiply. And then we'll take, and then we'll plug the shader to RGB into the factor. And to give us a little bit more control, we'll plug in another color ramp. So if we adjust this, go up to the top here, we'll just change the scale a bit. So now we get a really, really awesome looking stylized render. You can use these techniques however you see fit and you can experiment with them. You can even combine them. So let's just quickly add in one more of these. We'll just duplicate it, add it in over here. Go to input, add in a Fresnel, plug it into the bottom. We'll then press Shift A, go to Converter, Color Ramp, change it to Constant, and we'll just switch these two around. There we go. So now we've also got a bit of an outline created by the Fresnel. Uh, hopefully these different techniques that I've just shown you through this video will be of use. You can experiment and play around and you might be able to come up with some interesting new looks of your own. 
I'm going to create another NPR tutorial, but I'm going to try to create something that looks a lot more like my old ink shader that I had before. And hopefully I can get close enough because that one's really, really, really difficult to actually match. But I've gotten close a few times. If you guys have any requests or any questions, just comment below. And don't forget, if you like my tutorials and you want me to make more, consider donating to my Patreon. And if you don't want to do that, maybe send me some Bitcoin or some Ethereum. I don't really mind. Any little bit really does help. And if none of that tickles your fancy, find the link to my merch store in the description below. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I've decided to add a segment to my videos in order to say thank you to my subscribers. So thank you Miguel Connor, thank you FC Games and Music, and thank you C Ritter, or Critter, uh, I don't know how you prefer that to be said, but thank you, it, it really means so much to me, especially now, more than ever, thank you. I'm just so glad that I can create something that adds to your lives in any way, shape or form, and you feel it necessary to donate even a small amount to support my channel. So again, thank you. After I get it, I reinvest. After I get it, I reinvest.